We are live. Say hello, everyone. Hey. Hello, everyone. There we hey, go. Hey, guys. I've got everybody on sound, so we can all be heard, and it's not just me talking to myself awkwardly. So, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we are playing our way through the Dungeon of the Mad Mage, a journey into Undermountain. Uh, it's a long, sprawling sort of situation, so it'll be interesting to see how these three get along uh, to introduce our players to start with, just so we know who we're working with. I'm Katie, the DM. Uh, down below me on my screen, I have Rob. I think you're next. Hello, I'm Rob. I'm playing Left Foggy. Uh, Leo, if you want to go. Yeah, so, I'm Leo, I'm playing Lentaurus. <clears throat> Emma. Me, hi, I'm Emma. Uh, I'm Emma. I'm playing uh, Kuro. All right. Awesome. So uh, I'm going to drop it down to Rob for just a second to talk really quick about a Kickstarter that Gold Mountain Games has going on, and then we'll dive into the city that is Waterdeep. Lovely. Uh, so yeah, we are on February the 3rd launching the second zine that comes from our uh our original setting of the salt reach isles uh the second zine focuses on the elves and contains a lot of their lore some uh you've got the whole kind of species that you can use to use to create characters there's a couple of subclasses there's some monsters and spells and items for you guys to use and you'll also be able to pick up during the campaign the first scene that we ran last year um there's also some music art prints and you know some exciting stretch goals that will be coming with it so please do have a follow with that the pre-launch page is up at the moment um just have a look on all of our social media and you'll find the links there we're also the first thing you find if you go to kickstarter and type in gold mountain <laughs> don't even have to get all the way through games <laughs> so the city of Waterdeep. I would say a new day dawns on it, but it's probably later afternoon by the time most of its normal denizens wake up. A giant sprawling city next to a waterfront. It has different wards amongst it, differences between populace, and depending on how long you've been here, you've probably seen your fair share of oddities and odd things happening and strange people passing through. Before we decide who's going first, I'd like to get our first roll of the night in. Can we do initiatives to see who's going to go first? And indeed. Oh. Seven. <laughs> Twenty-two. It's so weird having a positive initiative. <laughs> uh, Thirteen. All right. Uh, it definitely sounds like we're starting with Emma, with Leo on deck. So... As up in the, where are we for this section? Up in the high ward of Waterdeep, a little bit more towards the noble section. The cobblestone here is a little nicer, a little less cracked than some other sections of the city, and there may not be very many villas and mansions, but some upper middle class sort of situations happening. Somewhere down that street, the doorbell to a bakery rings just a little bit. And the smell of fresh, fresh baked bread kind of spreads out to the street, mixing in with the other smells of various uh, street foods and merchants passing by. As you walk out of this bakery, trailing the scent of freshly baked whatever you may have procured behind you, what does the average citizen see as you pass by? Uh, Kuro is uh, a changeling, and well, how she can look like anything she wants, she actually keeps kind of like the pale, the white... Um, skin um she has uh these bright yellow eyes two uh small black horns kind of jutting out from her forehead uh going going upwards and uh golden freckles um white hair so a very kind of pale figure um her her robes are are kind of nicer uh she has like a, a nicer kind of with a little bit of embroidery of a, a blouse kind of fitting in a little bit with the higher society but not like uh too outlandish but, and carrying some sort of baked good i can imagine 
All right. Well, with baked goods in tow. Uh, sorry, it's the first time I'm hearing notifications for follows. We just got two followers. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Thank you. That's the first time I've had the, the sound going for it. It scared me. I was looking around going. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, let's go for a, Do you have any stops that you want to make on your way to the place you're going to scope out? Um, do I have everything I need? Yeah, you've, you've already geared up with what we've previously discussed, but just in case there's a last minute moment. No, no, I'm probably good. I'll just kind of... I'll, I'll take a, a bit of a longer route so I can like kind of go by the houses and kind of see like what's new. Do any new decorations up? Any new changes with the, the gates or anything? I don't know. Just kind of let's right. see what's going on. All right. I'm actually going to switch us over to the Waterdeep map so that we can have an idea of how large of a sprawling city we're dealing with. You are all on the map. Um, I will kind of give you directions to find yourself. Uh, Emma, you are over in the eastern side. Uh, you can find yourself next to Samart Street. Uh, I believe where there's a pointer button on here, too. Does this show you where something is? There you go. Can you see this by chance? I might be on the wrong page. Can I get, I... A, can I, can I get a link for that, please? <gasps> oh, yeah, you're fine. So sorry. <laughs> There's a maps link. Where do I send that? I still have a Slack up. Sure, gotcha. I did not, so give me just one moment. So confusing, like, the Forbidden City? This is wrong. <laughs> this isn't the right map. We've already been here. You don't want to You don't want to go just hang out and chill while everyone else oh, is I in water deep. <laughs> But <laughs> yeah, there is a Got it. link I there. See. Yeah, we're using. Uh, this is a good time to mention we're using the alpha version of D and D Beyond's maps for this instead of our usual Rule Twenty. So, a little bit of a learning process for everybody. I could see the pointer when you were using it. By the way, amazing. Well, yeah, so could I. Right. Well, whenever Emma is able to see it, you are right over Golden here. Golden serpents. Street or say it, Sam Mark. Mm -hmm. I'm somewhere over there. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. You'll be heading towards the south. Uh, it is a green token on the board if anybody needs to try to find it. That being said, uh, with a 13 in the initiative, Leo, you are up in the high northern side of things, up in the very, very corner, and I see you've <laughs> already found yourself. Uh, that is the Sea Ward. And uh, if you need to know for future reference, that is where the Sated Seder is actually in the game. <laughs> Wonderful. So, uh, as you are up there in a little bit saltier of a region of Waterdeep, <laughs> it smells a little more like the sea. Everything around you is just a little more... Well, let me put it this way. There, are, Instead of people... Uh, saying nicely that they have jewels or things that they want you to look at, there's somebody somewhere down the street from you yelling about Doc Nuggets for sale. <laughs> Whether or not you know what those are, they don't sound great. But as you head out of the tavern or wherever it is, you may have been uh, having yourself for the earlier part of the morning. The outer area of this part of town is uh, filled with a stranger variety of people. A lot of the influx from sea comes in here. You see various street urchins dashing by, as well as uh, an individual that's wearing sort of a barrel that has been painted with the words, the end is nigh. Uh, he seems to be yelling something a little ways down the street. What do everyone, including the man with the barrel, see as you exit this uh, establishment? Uh, so, as I exit, they would see a satyr. I have long kind of twisting horns going backwards, which are heavily kind of modified with gold, silver, jewelry. Um, they would see moss kind of colored tunic button over um, tunic with red and kind of dark red and gold, but it's very tarnished kind of goldish colors. 
shoulder pauldrons and I give off a I look like a performer I look like someone that you that is going to come up and have a conversation or is going to gather, gather like stand on a street corner and say the world is nigh because of this reason and kind of tell us to tell a story and a reason as to why all right it, if you don't bring the guy in the barrel with you as our adoptive npc <laughs> it might be sad are there oh, are there any stops you would like to make on your way to the far south from you end of waterdeep yeah i'm going to stop in on the smiling siren i'm going to say bye to some of the patrons there and let the land the the landlord of the, of the tavern know that i'm going to be away for a while before i then head on into where i'm going all right he uh agrees to uh re-rent your room to you if it's still open when you get back but you might have to switch if he's already changed it out for somebody else yeah that's fine all right well as you all head uh down this direction somebody is already very close by as we can tell <laughs> uh that's where it is in game so as you rob uh Make your way out of a door in the alleyway. The smell of iron kind of follows you just a little bit as you trail out, little speckles of red just getting off the edge of your coat as you head out. You round a corner and make your way into the castle ward, a decent part of the city, still in the middle middle class range, not quite as upper as the high end, but you can hear that there are the sounds of celebration around you. You're definitely near most of the feast halls and celebration corners and places of company and drinking. What does the average citizen see as you make your way around the corner? They see somebody who is walking and dressed as a noble. There is no, they know that someone, you know, I walk down the street like I am important. I am wearing deep black robes with red trims. The clothes I'm wearing are of such fine make that most people who walk past me couldn't ever even dream of affording them. But saying that I am quiet. I am direct. I am not looking around. I am I am heading straight to where I want to go. Anyone who does happen to see my face is probably a little bit taken aback. I am very pale, gaunt. I have kind of very sort of sunken cheeks and there are scars, old scars, all over my face. They are in patterns they look like they were done intentionally anyone who happens to catch a bit of my skin on my arms would see similar kind of scarring i am i am, i am a bit of an enigma I, as I said, I look like I I belong here, but I'm also, I'm not, I'm as a very direct, very kind of just on my way. All right. Well, uh, as you are the closer one, we're just going to let you get there uh, first, but as a general description, since we're all kind of vaguely headed to the same place, the... Yawning Portal is a historical spot in Waterdeep. If most of you have been here for even a little while, you've heard of it. It's pretty infamous. An adventurer went down a hole in the ground some decades ago, came back with this huge load of treasure, and built a tavern on top of the hole that he went down. And now he sells tickets to go down. It's oddly popular, enjoyable drinking spot. You get to see survivors coming up out of uh, what is a large pit in the middle of the tavern. The tavern itself is this large circular wooden structure with what appears to be three floors. 
As you enter, you can see that the first floor is mostly taken up by a bar, a few small tables, and a yawning portal in the middle of the floor, similar to an oversized well with a winch and bucket system attached next to it. A large bar across the back, which you can see is manned by an individual with kind of closely cropped hair, but almost to chin length. Uh, with kind of this sort of large, bushier black mustache, seemingly slinging drinks and not really paying attention to a whole lot that's going on, the walls appear to be covered in knickknacks. Like, if there was a singing bass available in this day and age, <laughs> they would have one on the wall. There are two flights above you that are uh, balcony rows that appear to go up, kind of circling the wall. And inside, you can see that there's only a few... Uh, drinkers at this current time, early afternoon, and from what you can see, the bucket is still up. You expect nobody's down there currently. Looks like a kind of a quiet off-season day. The foggy will enter. Give a quick kind of look around the room and then walk up to the bar. Alright. You enter, there's uh, what appears to be the owner, proprietor, barkeep, possibly. Fairly well-dressed. Uh, you note a lot of expense, but not flamboyance. Well-stitched clothes, well-stitched apron. Uh, just appears to be cleaning a cup as you come in. He raises an eyebrow at you and sees that you're a lone individual. What can I get for you? I will have uh, some bread. All right. Begins to pour you a glass of brandy. Are you just going to sit and sip and observe? Not quite, I don't think. So, if if I was looking to uh, go down into the uh, dungeon below, and I was looking for companions, do I just wait? Or is there a process I need to follow? Well, I mean, if you don't have any friends that'll go down with you and you need to find someone, yeah, you could wait nearby. Uh, we get you a piece of parchment. You can write looking for party on it. Maybe set it on the table if you think that would help. I think I will wait. He nods at you. All right, then. Slow, will... slow week. And I will take my drink and I will go stand in a a darkened corner. All right. While you are standing... It's circular. There aren't any corners. I will go stand in the darkest area of the building that I can find. While you are standing in that darkest area of the building that you can find, uh, of the few people drinking in here at this time of day, you do observe that there is an individual also kind of in the shadows, just a little down the ways from you. wearing a cloak, sitting at a back table, hunched up against the wall. Looks like somebody that doesn't want to be recognized. The obvious question is, do I recognize them? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I will surreptitiously kind of try and try and get a little bit closer, but try and maintain like Casually, so that they don't know okay. that I'm looking at them. Well, I, your perception's definitely high enough to see them. Could you make me a history check? Indeed, I can. No, I can't, I can't, apparently I can't roll. This is bodes really well. Ten. <laughs> nice, nice. I don't want this guy in my party. <laughs> can't roll. Uh, what little you can make out from here? The cloak is of a very nice quality, one that you wouldn't necessarily expect out of your average hanger about in here. So while that's occurring, uh, <laughs> I see him jumping back and forth. <laughs> um, uh, we can go ahead and go backwards, that works. Uh, while you're trying to observe this individual quietly, the front door will open and Kuro. 
As you enter this establishment, you can see much of the same. You can see that there are a few extra people sitting around the outside edges, a couple people hanging off in some shadows being weird. Uh, but mostly just uh, individuals seemingly sitting, drinking. A few of them seem to have their attention more towards the center, but as you open the door, they look up briefly before looking back to their drinks or notebooks. Have I been here before? Uh, if you want to have been, you could have been. If you've been here during any part of their busier season, you would have seen small parties uh, head down the portal, paying the bartender uh, about a gold each to head down. And one of the nights you were here, four went down and three came back up. They came back up a fair bit richer. Uh, they had made bets on themselves with the bartender, made a fair <laughs> bit of money off of it. Is I'm going to like look around at the walls. Are there like... I don't know what to call it, like a scoreboard, or here's who's in the dungeon right now, or... Uh, you don't see any scoreboard, but looking at the uh, kind of knickknacks that seem to cover these walls, they all have tiny little plaques on them that read an adventurer's name and how many days they were in the dungeon when they recovered it. Okay. The one that you're looking at currently is a mounted finger. It's got an extra joint on the end, and it's actively wiggling. It's severed. It's not attached to anything, but it's wiggling. It God, says, it's Vecna. <laughs> it says, uh, it says troll finger underneath the description. I'm gonna kind of look around, see if anyone's looking at me. I'm gonna uh, touch it. Currently, nobody's paying you a vast amount of, of attention. Of course you are. Uh, I'm gonna touch it. You touch it. It tries to touch you back. Whoa. Okay. What what seems to be like the longest, the biggest number on here? Uh, looking at it, there's uh everything ranging from a couple of weeks, a couple of days. Uh, in one case, you see one that says two years marked out. All right, I was just gonna. Note that down for a, a score to beat, but I don't know if I want to be down there two years, so I'll just make a little <laughs> mental note of that. And you get the feeling that depth might have a little bit more importance in what you come up with than uh, days down there, because you could just hang out in the first room for two years if you really That's felt true. inclined. That guy was probably a coward. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, but it doesn't look like anyone else is like gonna go down. Uh, I'll go over and look into the portal. Lean over and look at it. See what's going on down there. Uh, I'll just go over and push it. <laughs> As you're glancing down there, uh, you don't see a lot of people that look intent on going down right now. Not a lot of adventuring types. You can. There's a couple of people you can't see too well off in the shadows, but the main uh, people in here seem to be some sort of a goldish colored dragonborn sitting off to the side of the portal. Uh, sitting with hands steepled next to a open notebook. Uh, there is, off in the corner, a bard that is playing a three-stringed harp. And uh, there is a rather flamboyant-looking gentleman standing near the, uh, not near the portal itself, but off to the side of it, one foot sort of Captain Morgan posed up on the table. <laughs> uh, this flamboyant mustache, this poofy hat. Can you go ahead and make me a history check? would love to. 16. You recognize from sketches uh, a really famous adventurer. His name is Volo. Volo Thump Gedard. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> the definitely real famous adventure. A little more flamboyantly, brightly colored dress than you necessarily expected. Uh, but he appears to be just drinking a bottle of ale and attempting to pose heroically near the portal entrance. He's by himself? Uh, yes. I'll go talk to him. Alright. We'll come to that in just a second. Uh, Leo, we'll go ahead and get you down here. Yeah. I know you had the longest way to go. And I was stopping off as well, so I'm, I'm happy to be fashionably late to a meeting that doesn't exist. <laughs> Alright. Uh, wonderful. So, as I open the door, what do I see? 
Uh, all the things previously mentioned, the uh, tavern itself and the denizens therein, as well as the previously described uh, two other people, one kind of off in the shadows, seemingly standing near to another person in the shadows. You're not sure what the shadow group is doing over there, but they might be cool people, who knows? Uh, heading towards what appears to be sort of a bardic-ish looking fellow, but very flamboyant. Uh, you see Kuro headed that direction. And you also note, uh, can I have a perception check out of you? If that's okay. Yep. <laughs> Twenty-two. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, glancing around the uh, stage, you somewhat recognize the harp player sitting on the stage playing a three-stringed harp. And by somewhat recognize, I mean, he's a friend of a friend. You have heard his name before. Uh, Matrim, you think? You've also heard tell he's a harper. Not a harp player, but a harper of the harper faction variety. <laughs> Which is confusing when he also plays a three-string harp. Wonderful. I'm going to go buy a drink at the bar and then go and sit down by Matron. Okay. Oh. Uh... Yeah, and then I'll start a conversation up with Matron, so it's whether or not you want to carry on with Kuro and Volo and then come back to me. I'm happy either way. Sure thing. Uh, yeah, you sit down and wait for him to finish his current set. He's on uh, something about a dragon burning down a village. Should be done in just a second. <laughs> and Kuro, uh, as you go to approach him, he you, you see the gut suck in a little bit as he stands up a little bit straighter. There's just a stop. grin. And kind of like point, I'm like, oh my gods, are are you? He bows deeply and says, <laughs> the one and only, of course. It's the most splendiferous occasion to have brought you into my light. It's good to see you. How are you? Who are you? Are you going down? Are you an adventurer? Brave? True? Just thinking about it. I mean, I, just, I don't really have anything else going on today. But uh, are are you going in? If you've, I assume you've you've been you've conquered this already. I'm, I'm he, sure. He glances towards it. I've been, but conquered hardly. I've not heard of anyone conquering it. He oh, just, well, just, do you think you'll give it another try? Is oh, it, I'm I'm retired now. Here? I it's been a long time since I adventured. It was very rough out there on the road for. A gentleman in his silver years. I, I see, I see. Um, any any tips you would give for a, a, a fresh adventurer? No, I hear this conversation. Uh, you can hear Volo's part, definitely. It's loud, it's flamboyant, and there's arm waving accompanying it. <laughs> he uh, says, oh. Perhaps I could have some information. Uh, I've heard rumors of something that might be down there that could assist you. Take anything I can get. <laughs> well, in that case, do you know the history of this wonderful dungeon? Do I know the history of this wonderful dungeon? Uh, that is up to you. Have you tried to look into it? Uh... Maybe just, like, what she's heard, like, people talking about it probably wouldn't have done any research. That's, like, wizard stuff. Yeah, you've heard a lot of they crazy stuff. He, uh, says, well, long before, uh, the mad mage moved in and made it a dungeon, there was an ancient elven city before Waterdeep was built. Here. And, uh, well, they had this lovely throne made out of, uh, alabaster or ivory, something white. I do believe it was. They created it, uh, got into a bit of a fight with the dwarves that used to live under there. Dwarves, uh, stole it because they were afraid of the elves. Right underneath their slender little noses, just tiptoed their way out. Elves haven't seen it since. Elves are still very upset. You know, they can remember most of them were there. So, uh, if you were looking for friendship from some elves, 
You could certainly find, find the chair that no one's. How how long ago did this happen? Oh, couple hundred years or so. Got it. Got it. So, sorry if I'm misunderstanding, but your your advice to the fresh new adventurer is to find an artifact that hasn't been seen in two hundred years. Well, if you don't shoot for the moon, how will you land among the stars? So I suppose you're right. I should stay optimistic. Um, health potions. Uh, I'll, I'll remember that. Health potions. Yes. yes. Health that's, potions. That's, a, my that's good. Okay, so that's good advice. I, I've, I've stocked up on on those. But uh, that foggy is going to have walked <laughs> slightly closer as he's had one side of this conversation. And he's, he's probably about six or seven feet away, quite clearly looking at Kuro and standing behind Volo because he does not want a conversation with Volo. All right. Can I tell that you are trying to avoid Volo? I mean, uh... I don't know. Or are you staring at me weirdly, I suppose? Are you being weird about it or are you being chill? I mean, you're being stared at by a man in incredibly intricate robes with scars all over his face. I think you probably recognize, you probably realize. Okay, so uh, Carol, well, will, she's like looking at Volo, then she'll kind of uh, switch her, her view over to you. Like, you seem like you've seen some adventure. Any Any tips that you could? Give a, a, a newer adventurer. You are, you are going down into the dungeon. I haven't made up my mind yet, but. I have need of others to accompany me. Are you any good? I mean, I don't mean to offend, but just the, the, the amount of scars tends to show you've been hit a few times these are not uh, scars of defense I see I am a talented lock picker trap finder me too if we run into traps we'll make quite a pair if you can be useful to me down there it will be good to find others who wish to go down. Well, uh, when I'm not lock picking and uh, trap dismantling, I am known to do the occasional healing spell to be useful. You will see him, like, turn his nose up a bit and, like, sneer when you mention healing. Do not, uh, do not think that I need the wounds of my flesh healed. DM, do I have to join this party? <laughs> Literally not a requirement. <laughs> um, <laughs> while 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 you're busy being creeped out, let's take a second. <laughs> Back over to uh, Nintaris. Uh, Nintaris, you see Matrim uh, Merig put down his uh, three-string harp. He is a halfling a little bit of kind of curly-ish brown hair on the top, a little bit wavy, light gray eyes, just looks a, a little like a younger man at first glance until you remember that halflings exist. But uh, he hops down off of his stool and down off the stage and gives you a nod as he heads down. Hey, matron, 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 buddy old pal, question query, have you been down there? been down down in the yeah no i'm not insane do you want to go down there for what oh adventure stories to sing come on you're awfully good with that harp we could write some more stories together me and you adventuring down there he kind of cocks his head at you looks sideways I don't know so much about that. See, I'm actually here uh, looking for someone to go down there for me. Because I don't want to make the trip either. What's in it for me? 
I'm happy to be insane. Hmm. Bag of gold? For a delivery. And access to a safe house at the delivery point, should you make it. Do I get the gold now, or afterwards? Well, if you're going down the hole, I'll give you the gold on your way down if you want. Yeah, works for me. I was going down anyway. I need to find some other people to go down with. Obviously, not many people want to go down. Um, yeah. But yeah, I can I can do a delivery for you. It's a slow season. Uh, listen, if you don't make it all the way down, just bring the package back up with you. It's no big deal. Uh, we're just trying to get somebody down there to drop it off. A little bit of a favor owed. You understand how it goes. Uh, it's a... Uh, so, yes? What? What? Who's down there that you want to give it to? How long have they been down there? Uh, see, that's a bit of the rub. They're not, uh, they're not down in the dungeon proper, but you should run into them if you're, uh, down deep enough. Have you ever heard of, uh, Skullport? I haven't heard of Skullport. Would you no. like to make a history check? <laughs> I'll make a history check. <laughs> Sixteen. Uh, you've heard mentions of a place called Skullport. In theory, somewhere in Under Mountain, an underwater port utilized by people that don't necessarily get along with the society of Waterdeep. Uh, possibly doing things that don't get along with societal laws whatsoever. But, uh... Mattis says, well, there's a Harper safe house down there uh, for people trying to get out of trouble that they've gotten themselves into while down there. It's uh, also a connection to the outside world if you need a quick way back up. Yeah, that, that, you know what, that sounds like a jolly good idea. So how about I take the parcel, uh... And the money, you write some wonderful story about how amazing and, and great I am at doing this delivery for you, and I will go and go off and find other people to help. Alright, but you gotta bring me back some stories of what's down there. We haven't heard anything fresh in a while. Most of the last five groups haven't gotten past the third. When I come back, we can go to the Smiling Siren, and I will regale you and the audience with my stories. I look forward to it. Do me a favor and survive until then. Uh, no guarantees, but I'll try. He hands you a small brown paper wrapped parcel and a bag of what appears to be about 50 gold. Sweet. Uh, right, let me add that into things. Uh, I'll take it off of him. I will smile and then look around for other people and let him get on with his day. Uh, looking around the room, you see, as I mentioned before, that uh, one golden dragonborn woman kind of hanging out by herself, hand steepled. She appears to be watching a scene just across the way as uh, Kuro appears to be not talking to so much as being talked at by Volo, who is gesticulating wildly. And there is a more shadow cloaked individual kind of watching all of them talk from another corner. It, it just looks like a little bit of a strange scene over there. I'm gonna... I, do I recognize Volo? Uh, as a bard, yeah. I, I think it's just base. You have to be able to recognize him. <laughs> I'm going to... Uh... Avoid that and go over to the Dragon Ball <laughs> because I know what he's like and don't want to get involved in that story. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I'm just gonna lean down to Kuro. Kuro, be like, that's Satyr. Looks like he might be uh, interested. Go and talk to him. <laughs> Lean away from this creepy man. <laughs> Understandably. Thanks for the tip. Uh, check him out. 
as uh, you come into his view, like, oh. as you come into his view frame at all, uh, he Volithump looks towards you and goes, "Ah, a brutally scarred young man. You must be quite or a terrible fighter. Are you just really bad at fighting?" I'm just gonna turn away. <laughs> As you as you do, you can hear him still talking. Can I high five Volo. Yeah, I'm gonna high five Volo, and then I'm gonna go talk to Nantaris. <laughs> as you two both walk away from this man, he continues kind of pontificating on various uh, things as you exit. Uh, you head over towards. You're just walking away from him. You're headed over towards the satyr that you saw. Yes. Uh, Nintaris, are you staying at the table where you left with, uh, the Harper, or are you moving around? I was going to move over to the Dragonborn right. that you mentioned. If I see Kuro coming over to me, I will probably just sit back down okay. and wait to see what happens. All right. Now that Volo is not in that conversation. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Uh, they both appear to have moved away from Volo for the current time being. Uh, the Dragonborn is watching everybody get up and sit down and just picks up a notebook and starts making notes. Uh, a shadowy figure in the corner continues being shadowy, and you sit back down as a horned individual makes their way towards you. I'm gonna get my pipe of smoke monsters out, and and just start load it with tobacco and start puffing it, making a little drag smoke dragons appear around me. <laughs> Straight Gandalf style, beautiful. How how intelligent do these little dragons look? Like if I put my hands out, will they come and sit? <laughs> uh, I don't know how pipe smoke monsters work, so we'll wait for the bard to decide that. <laughs> While smoking this pipe, you can use an action to exhale a puff of smoke that takes the form of a single creature, such as a dragon, a thump, or a frokemoth. The form must be small enough to fit in a one-foot cube and loses its shape after a few seconds, becoming an ordinary puff of smoke. <clears throat> you you hold you can hold your hands out, <laughs> and you will, you will watch as it just vanishes. They don't move towards you. They are just <laughs> skillfully made smoke rings. Kuro will kind of like go like, like that was this. <laughs> oh no. I, I knew that. <laughs> uh, quite a fancy trick you got there. Oh, it keeps me entertained. Maybe just dragons, or just I, whatever I, suits the mood, or well, whatever suits the mood. Sometimes I like to have, uh, make a frogimoths, you know, the big, the really big frogs, but small because they have to be kind of small. It's a the only downside to the pipe is I'd like it to be able to make huge creatures. Unfortunately, uh, it's not that kind of item. Still, it's entertaining, and the kids love it. I'm sure the kids do. And with the right backlighting, it casts a really big shadow, which, you know, in my business is, is all there for the kind of the theatrics of it. What kind of business is that? Not entertaining. What brings an entertainer to the yawning portal? Just looking for a gig? Oh, there's some things I need to investigate. Uh, primarily down there, and he points towards the yawning portal. Anything especially interesting? Well... Have you heard... The rumors... Circulating around the Shadow Council and its conspiracy to control... The Waterdeep, and how it's all based in Alterdeep, and Alterdeep is... Down the Yawning Pool. Have I heard this? Conspiracy theory? Oh, left mind. I hate you. Oh, no. Uh, um, you 
have heard odd conspiracy theories like that before, and the history of Undermountain is so mishmashed that Sure, that could be one of the alternate versions. It's it's not one that you've heard commonly referred to, but sure. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, and it's all linked. If 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 we were in if we were in, if we were in the tavern I I stay at, I could show you the wall. It's wonderful. Everything's linked. I have I have bits so of like ribbon. string. Yes, yes, bits of string and paper. Uh, there's there's a whole group of us. Uh, we all work together. Uh, we're getting we're getting some traction uh, on the various things. You have like things. A, a name, like a code name for your group. Yes, we do. Uh, let me breathe. Let me check my memory. Lethvagi <laughs> <laughs> um, walks out of the yawning portal, out of Waterdeep, mm -hmm. and gets as far away from okay. this person as he can get. Uh, okay, you want to roll a new character or what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, while that's happening, if you wanted to check out anyone else, there's still I mean, the shadowy figure that you were so kind of trailing. If Volo is trying to engage me in what he thinks is a conversation, I'm going to make a beeline for anyone else. Okay. Uh, so I will, I will head over to this shadowy figure and kind of may, may I. As you, uh, the figure kind of holds out a hand, motioning for you to sit down, pushes the hood back just a little bit. Uh, with the hood back, you can make another history check if you'd like, and not roll a nine. Right. Third roll of the night. Is it going to be rubbish? 21. Awesome. Uh, you do recognize her, uh, because you've not that you've been to many of your family's parties or events or things like that, but definitely the type of person that would have been invited and not the type of person you would expect to be sitting in the yawning portal. Uh, Esvale Rosnar. She's a noble daughter of a family with a history not incomparable to yours. Sorry, what was her first name? Uh, Esvel. E-S-V-E-L-E. -E It is unexpected to see you here as well. She nods a bit. Protecting the family name, unfortunately. Are you intending to delve into the dungeon? No, looking for someone who did. My idiot brother. Crescendo went down last week. He hasn't been heard from, and frankly, I'm worried he's up to something that could be more damage than our reputation needs at this point. I am... I am seeking to go down for my own reasons, but, uh... I was seeking others to join me as, uh... Fodder. If... If you are seeking people to go down, then... And you can pay. Maybe you could encourage, uh... Others over there who are intending to go down, I think, to uh, join me. And we will search for your brother while we are down there. That could work for me. Uh, I don't know that he's still alive, to be honest with you, with as long as he's been down there. So, him, word of him, if you can find his signet ring, just proof that he has metademize, even if, you know, just whatever you can find for me. I could do the sum of 300 gold for you upon that return. Uh, I, I need not the money, but I will, uh, I am sure that that money will uh, entice others to join me. And I understand that what you want us to find. Give Indeed. Me, give me a few moments. Thank you. And I, I will stand up and head. <clears throat> I will stand up and head straight towards Curry. Okay. Uh, currently talking with a satyr, blowing smoke monsters. I will just like interrupt. Don't care what I talk. <laughs> Mid conspiracy explanation, just. <laughs> um, you and if you are interested too, 
150 gold to come down with me each. On return, if we uh, find evidence of a uh, a noble who has gone down there. You're not gonna gonna ask like for a resume or like any qualifications. You're just like you and you. Let's go. Do you see anyone else in here who is willing to go down into the portal? Well, I haven't talked to everyone yet. I, this is only my second stop. If you wish to spend time looking for other people, then there is 300 gold as a payment for whoever accompanies me down there. And we have to find signs of this note. If you find other people, we will get less money each. I do not care. I am looking for those to come down with me because I have a job I need to do. I will I will leave you to your own um, conversations. And I'll walk back off. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Poor well, as I was saying. <laughs> 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 I was just gonna say, this isn't even, like, weird for you. Random people just breaking into the middle of your conspiracy being like, listen, here's this thing, and then leaving and you being like, okay, great, anyway. <laughs> I don't even know who that guy was. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so, weird, weird bad fighter aside, the, the group, we call ourselves the curators. We curate all the knowledge. There's a lot of knowledge the others don't want you to know, like the Lords of Waterdeep. They don't want you to know it, and they try and stop you from knowing it, like Elminster, and Elminster's secret, like there's a bard, and how he's his shadow council that are running it all. They run it from Waterdeep, like I said, and Waterdeep you can only get to if you find the, if you find the entrance in the Undermountain, which is why I need to go to the Undermountain to find it. <laughs> so, so you are going down there? Yes. I don't remember what my question was that started this. I'm quite honest. But I think that was it. I think it might have been. Are you going down? Do you want to come down with me? Shh. I mean, you, you seem, seem more pleasant company than I'll nod after Mr. <laughs> 300 Gold. <laughs> yes, he's weird. I'm but... weird. <laughs> <laughs> He seems very dour. It just doesn't. If I'm looking for like a good fun time, you know, he just doesn't. Did, did seem you know, like it? I'm a cook. <laughs> I can entertain you with the stories and cook you good meals. I, I love a good <laughs> meal. You have won my heart, sir. The question is, do we want three hundred gold? Because if we find the if we find the thing and come back and kill him, we would have all three hundred gold. And he wants Are to we go assuming down. 300 is... But is there more? He just already took his part out? Because he said 300 for us. Right? 150 each? So does that mean there's like 450? And then if we just... Then there's more? For us to split? <laughs> Not that I would do such a thing, but just like thinking. I, I, just, I, just thinking out just loud. Just like imagining. Like, just like writing stories, you know? <laughs> I mean, we could always rob him, and then if it's not 450, we'd get probably 150 gold's worth of stuff off of him. He seemed fairly well put together. He's some nice clothes, yeah. Yeah. In his, 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 my clothes are only worth 150 <laughs> gold. How dare you? <laughs> when I sell it to Barrel Man, I'm happy with whatever <laughs> I get. <laughs> well, I'll fight you for those clothes. Well... I'll be in a good mood if I've eaten well, so I suppose I can deal with him. I might be able to win him over. <laughs> I'm very charismatic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going to enjoy watching you try. <laughs> Do you have enough supplies to go down there right now? Uh... Pearl will, will take out, like, a, it looks like a small bag of holding, but when she opens it, like, a, a burst of, like, cold air comes out. Like, um, I have two dozen pastries and then a bunch of rations. Plus, like, all my gear. But I think, is that enough food? I, I will get 
my bag, which is just a standard bag of holding, and open it up. <laughs> uh, I have. And I'm going to rummage around. Oh, I have a... But I do have a barrel of salted beef. And some salmon. Yes, yeah, I can make something out of that. <clears throat> okay, okay. Um, um, also, Jet. what's your name? Uh, Kuro. Kuro. Nantaros at your service. Lovely to meet you. Do we go back to the weird man, or do we just wait for him to come back here? He didn't really say what he wanted to do. He just kind of walked away. Did he just return to the shadow that we saw? We found him in? Um... He, yes, he's returned <laughs> and sat back at the table with, um... The lady whose name I've already forgotten. Esvel. Esvel. So he's... Oh, sorry. He's returned to the table and um, sat down and gone. It is unusual for people to turn down money, I think. I think we will have a deal shortly. They just need to talk. She nods. I appreciate it. I'd hate for my brother's trouble to put our family name in jeopardy. Talking about such things, it would be uh, beneficial and appreciated if you did not uh, div divulge that you met me here. Oh, of course, you didn't meet me either. Of course. And I will then just lean back and sip, sip my drink and wait for the others to decide that they want to uh, take the gold. All right. <laughs> well, while you sit back and consider that, <laughs> you two are having that conversation. You've got the tavern. I mean, in theory, there are definitely mercenary guilds. Like, you could hire somebody if you wanted to go out of your way. <laughs> But that's losing money or instead of gaining money. That's true. You do have to pay the people that either carry your stuff or fight for you. I can carry my own stuff and fight for me. I don't need that. I just need the guy with the money. Alright. Go get him, Tiger. Win him over. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna walk over to the table. As you uh, do, Lethvag, you will stand up. You will also notice, which hasn't been said before, at his hip he has a cat and nine tails with metal, uh, instead of knots on the end of each rope, there are metal spikes on the end of it. So you're even creepier than we previously thought. <laughs> There's layers like an onion. <laughs> each one more creepy than the last of I'm gonna. I am. I right to assume that there, because Lethvagi sat at the table with this person. Am I right to assume that there's more seats at that table than two? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could easily sit down if you wanted to. Wonderful. I'm just gonna like bold as brass. Just go over, pull a chair out, sit down. Okay. <clears throat> So Lethvagi has stood up uh -huh. to approach, and you've just come and sat down, and he will look down at you. <laughs> you uh, do not ask to join the table. It's a tavern. It's not a, not a fine dining establishment. It's a tavern. I'm a bard. This is a seat. And if you want to talk about money, I want to have that conversation sat down, not stood up. said are factual, but there is a certain etiquette. I'll also sit down. <laughs> As Vargi's like looking around like, what the fuck is wrong with people? As Vel just taps on the table and says, I'll uh, send around your way on my way out. And you see her walk towards the bartender and 
you will receive some extra ales within a few minutes. She seems to have paid <laughs> Let's for this. Vardy will take a seat after sighing heavily. So you have um, decided to take me up on the offer. Pose, I've got nothing better to do today. I, I've got some uh, business down there, so it's going down there anyway. If I can earn a bit of extra gold, I'll earn a bit of extra gold. Fine. We must find evidence of a noble's effect. There will be a reward on return if we have information. We have a description of this noble? Any identifying I'm assuming features? assuming I know what he looks like. Uh, you you know of the family, and you know that unless he's been physically separated from his hand, his signet ring will be recognizable to you as well. We will know him by his signet ring, and I have a passing knowledge of what he looks like. All right, we go in there, we ask everyone to see their hands, we get out. I like this plan. He has been down there for a week. Sounds like some people are down there for two years, so I... Maybe he's just getting started. I am, uh... Lethvaki. Kuro. Nantaris. So we are to, uh... You will, for this payment, be my entourage as we delve into the dungeon. No. I was thinking, like, co-worker, associate, whatever teammate. Name you, whatever name makes you feel important. Would you mind if you were my entourage? As I said, whatever makes you feel important. I love having an entourage. <laughs> I can't believe I'm a person who has an entourage now. You're very arrogant, aren't you? Looking at Lothvargi. You're noble. Your arrogant is noble. I am a man who knows his station. That didn't answer the question. <laughs> it wasn't a question. You, it was a statement. Okay, I'll make it a question. Are you a noble? Well, I mean, look at the way this, he dresses. <laughs> the way he talks. You really need to ask? I am a member of one of the noble families of this city, yes. I could have told you that for free. And with a lot of sass. Do you have any dietary requirements? I will not eat pickles. Good to know. That's more of a preference than a, a requirement. <laughs> and you, you watch as he pulls a, a notepad out and writes your name and my like, pickles next to her. <laughs> Appreciate it. I am. Um, I will eat any food that is of decent enough quality. I do not wish to eat rats or anything you may eat, but uh, food is food. No rats. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you can cook up a really good rat. I'll try anything once. What if we find any? Not everything. Not like pickles. The question is, do we go down there now, or do we get some supplies? We've already discussed our food. How much food do you have? I have come prepared for a uh, prolonged stay. I have a uh, duty I need to perform down there. Sounds very important. <laughs> it is. Five 
days with rations on me. Is that all? Five? <laughs> that is enough to keep me fed for time to do my task. Although now, if we have to go off task and find this, uh, this other noble, that may take longer. I am sure we can, I, I can send someone to pick us up more rations if needs be. You there, what? urchin boy. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly, I nearly clipped my Find boots. me a hat. But when your rations run out, I will start feeding you from my rations and I'll charge you for it. I'm not giving you any of my food. I can pay for anything that needs to be paid for that ensures that my task is complete. Okay. That's that's very good to know. <laughs> if you, however, intend to uh, fleece me, it will not end well for you. I will pay dependent on the quality of your food. Isn't that how most cooks get paid? <laughs> I, I, Are you new to I, this? <laughs> sure you heard me when I said I am a, a member of one of the noble families of this city. It, what a cook gets paid is dealt with by my bursar. So you don't have experience with this. Okay. Wonderful. I need to top up on a couple of things. But then I'm good to go down. You know what I think? We're all going to become the best of friends. I'd like to roll a persuasion on that. Please there feel free. A, there is a sneer on my face as he says that. 24. Uh, with a 24, I mean, he seems genuine. You don't know if you believe him about the will be friends part, but he seems very genuine in his belief of that. Good for him. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> you, at you at least feel like... Uh, well, it could grade on you. Uh, it could have been worse. You could have picked up another noble to deal with. Yeah, I didn't want that. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, do you need me to send someone to get anything else before we head down? Oh, I was going to buy it from the barkeep. Are you all right with eating the food from a, a place like this? Named Tavern, I am, I am more than happy to eat. I'm just curious where you, you drew the line, noble types. I think as long as it doesn't have rats in it, he's fine. That, that gives us a lot of options. Yeah. All right. So, uh, while you head up to uh, the bartender, his name is Dernan. Uh, he has a tiny little name tag. Uh, wiping out a large glass as you head over, and he looks towards you. Getting a party together over there? Yes. Myself, the, the lovely Kuro, and uh, the, the Fagi. He, 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 he likes rats. Did you know that? It's got a real penchant for rat-based food. Uh, in my experience, that's usually goblins with that particular penchant, but, uh, sure. It would explain the gaunt face. There's not much meat on a rat, is there? No, not from what I've heard. Not cooked one myself in, uh, some years. Um, am I able to buy some bottles of spirits? Certainly. Is there any particular spirit you would enjoy? Uh, more of a dwarven whiskey? Or are you more 
exotic, you need something elvish. Dwarven whiskey will be fine. I'm used to drinking it. Mm -hmm. yeah. How much for a bottle? A bottle of basic dwarven whiskey. Uh, call it two silver. I'll buy five. All right, then. Leans down under the counter and picks out a few more of these, and you gain five bottles of the D&D equivalent of Fireball. Yes. This is gonna be fun. I'm gonna stow them into my bag and then head back over to the table. Alright. <laughs> Did you get anything you wanted uh, kept cold? I'll get out my, my bag again. Anything? Mm. My my yeah. bag's kind of special. It's not oh, like you your got standard. A, you got a fancy version. I just got the basic version, trying to save on money. But actually, yes. Um, yes. I'm going to pull out 15 loaves of bread. <laughs> you keep bread cold? Well, it would last longer. All right, I'm well, assuming. I mean, I assume I have room in my bag of colding. Yeah. For such things. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yep. There is uh, definitely room in there to uh, throw in 15 bread loaves and whatever else you want. <laughs> Can work to store body parts if needed, but generally preferable for food. <laughs> Listen, what goes in my bag of colding is my business. It's true. So, as you all are getting your various things together, uh, the tavern itself appears to have gone back to its original state that you entered in. Uh, Volo is kind of just posing off by himself in a corner. It seems like he's trying to get somebody, anybody, to look at him so that he can make eye contact and then just descend upon them to tell them a story. But otherwise... I'd rather cut out my own eyes. All right. <laughs> Well, all right, then. Uh, besides that, the only person that you all haven't talked to in here is a gold dragonborn and a big old yawning black hole in the middle of the floor. Bethvagi has no interest in talking to anyone else. He's just going to sit and wait for you guys to be ready. All right, if we go talk to the portal next. I, I want to go talk to the dragonborn. All right. I just think we should probably get a bit more information. I mean, it's not like we've got... We're wasting sunlight. It's all dark down there, I assume. What if it isn't? What if Alter Deep gives it a fake sun and a fake night? And then the sun and night cycle. How do we know our sun isn't fake? What if this is <laughs> Alter Deep? We were here all along. <laughs> <laughs> and the yawning portal just takes you to the real water deep. Are you, are you quite all right? Yes, I, I wouldn't expect you of your ilk to understand these conversations considering... It's your nobility that hide all this kind of information. Anyway, I will leave you, Kuro, with the idea that we are actually in the mad dungeon and we're gonna go into ultra, into proper water deep while I go talk to the to the uh, uh dragon king. That's the case. If this is the mad mage's dungeon, the way out should be a walk in the park. As then Tyrus walks off, I'm going to turn to Kuro and go. 300 gold all for you if we leave him behind. <laughs> I like him. And he cooks. Do you cook? Or you said you don't even know how much cooks make. No, you don't cook. You do make a good point. We do need a chef. <laughs> <laughs> I'm considerably more grouchy when I haven't eaten good food. So Which would match your personality about. better, but I don't think I'd enjoy it. What is he talking about? <laughs> I don't know, but it's fun, isn't it? If he is accusing me and my family of impropriety, I do not find that amusing. Well, if noble families have been accused of worse, aren't you used to it? 
you kind of build a barrier against such things. It's just, I kind of assumed when you live at the top, people are always throwing rocks up there, right? A rock would not uh, <laughs> bother my family. Well, it seems like that one did. You barely said anything and you're already... Hmm? Now, if there's going to be fighting amongst my entourage while we're down there, I'd prefer we got it settled up here. And when there isn't potentially like a gelatinous cube that might come join. So we really don't need that. My concern is that he seems uh, unstable. You see why I asked about asking him about his qualifications before I offering him the 300 gold? Like you were just ready to take well, who you consider to be a crazy person. I think he's quite lovely. Down there for no reason? You don't like to be a little more picky about who you take, I mean. I do not see anyone else in this bar that is willing to venture down and I have a task I must complete. All right, as you said? Fine. So, I think I'm gonna be pickier in my future entourages. Keep him, uh, keep him on a leash. I see my job. I don't have a problem with him. You're the one with the whip, cracked whip at him. <laughs> so, while that's being considered, um, <laughs> as you approach uh, this Dragonborn, you can see that she's probably a little bit older of Dragonborn. You haven't seen like an age variation a lot in the few that you've seen, but the scales are dull around the edges. Uh, there's this long drooping, almost Chinese dragon style, uh, little things coming out of the front of her face, the little mustache. Uh, she has a collection of different uh, religious iconography hanging off of kind of a keychain situation hanging over her shoulder. It looks like at any given moment she could maybe pull up a god, any god you might need, just off of a holy symbol. Uh, but as you approach, she nods at you and closes the book that she was writing in. Says, good, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you doing? Oh, you know, slow day, just, uh, getting paid to sit here, I suppose. Getting paid to sit. What a wonderful idea. I've not been that lucky. Oh. What is it you do? Well, currently I find myself in the employ of a, well, a wizard. Up in the, uh, nicer parts of Waterdeep. A very powerful wizard, and he wishes, uh some newer magical items to experiment with, so he sent me to plop down here and buy them off of whoever comes up out of there. What's this wizard's name? He does have a name. Hold on. <laughs> uh, Wakanga Otamu. And uh, my name is Obadea Ubadai. I'm about to go down there. And I gesture at the yawning board. Oh, congratulations. Yes, I have a I have a really, really nice team. Uh, one of them's lovely, one of them's weird. And I gesture to Crow and the Foggy at the table there, South that. I'm over there making a whip motion. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Did, did, did you know that the the gaunt man over there, he's a noble. Oh. You occasionally get a few of that sort around here. They, uh, you know, I, I I don't know if the wizard that I'm working for is a noble. I think he might just be a noble's cousin. A noble's cousin? Um, and you said his name was Wakonga. Oh, Wakonga Otamu. Uh, he's not in Waterdeep right now, though. A uh, vacation house. A vacation he has a vacation house? In Port Nyanzaru. What what kind of artifacts does he want? I'd quite like to get to know him. And obviously, if I can t arrive with a bundle of artifacts, it'll uh, obviously make him a bit more talkable. Well, sure. Uh, uh, currently, our deal is that I'll bring him the artifacts after I've purchased the entire sum that he deposited at the Waterdeep Bank for me. As soon as I've expended that sum, I head back to Port Nyanzaru with his goods. Uh, should be 
magic items. I've been looking for spell books. Uh, magic items of really any variety I'll take, but I'd be happy to pay you something like, oh, 10 platinum pieces for a common, 50 platinum pieces for an uncommon, 500 for a rare, maybe 5,000 platinum pieces for a very rare magic item. Wow. So just, just to confirm, the smallest amount of money you're willing to pay is five platinum. Is that correct? Ten, actually, but I appreciate Ten. you trying to lowball it down. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, specifically items from down there. You see, he says they're close to a knot in the weave, so it does something. And I guess magical items from there have an extra flavor, spice? I, I He might eat them for all I know. No? The, well, Obadiah, I will go down, I will get as many things as I can. I will bring them back up. We can we can make a trade. Right. Um, obviously, you're not here 24-7. Oh, no. I actually rented one of the rooms upstairs. I am here 24-7. <laughs> oh, um, well, could you do me a favor? Possibly. I'll pay you for it. I mean, if I'm here anyway, what's an extra few coins, right? Well, I need to get a message to some of my friends mm -hmm. over at the tavern name escaping the fizz rep. <coughs> uh, the Sated Sator. Um, if you give it to the barkeep and say, Nuntaris asked this to go to his friends, mm -hmm. he'll know what to do with it. Um... And I'm I'm gonna open a notebook, tear or take one of my pieces of paper out my uh, out of my bag, write down. Going into the awning portal. There's a weird guy offering lots of money named Lethvagi. He's a noble. Don't trust? Question mark. Please look into. <laughs> Please look into. Oh, uh, she. Had um. Obviously, hand it over to Obadai, and I'll hand over two gold as well. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, I'll use this to buy dinner tonight. Uh, I have to go up to the bank to get my stipend for the month as is, so I'll drop it off on my way if that's what you need. Uh, the sated sater, you say? Yes. Like I said, give it to the barkeep. He'll know what, if you say Nantaris uh, sent this for his friends, he'll know what to do with it. Oh, very well. Uh, just don't forget to keep an eye out for uh, spell books down there. Willing to pay quite well, a bit for those. I've made I've made a note of that spell books and any other magical items which have a weird flavour. Uh, yes, really any magic items that come out of there, uh, especially if you don't want them. I'm not going to bother you for anything neat that you find that you want to keep. I know how you adventurers are. <laughs> well, if it's not a musical instrument, I don't know if I'll be keeping it, but uh, we'll see what we can do. Oh, well, good luck. I, I hope you make it back alive. I'll deliver your letter. Wonderful, thank you. I'll go back to the other two. And sit back down at the table. Anything of uh, importance? No. Uh, something about some crazy wizard who is wanting some magical items and is willing to pay like one platinum piece for a magical item platinum yeah it's not bad obviously you, i think you're just... only interested in money well yes i i have i have a whole society to fund we don't all have big rooms full of gold back home that we could just take from do you not know what a bank is? Yeah, it's a room full of gold. Yes. Just not in your house. Yes. When it's in your house, it's called a safe. Yes. So what, why do you think I have a bank in my house? Do you have a safe in your house? A safe is a room full of money that you I, take money out. I wouldn't be uh, very wise if I, if I told you. I'm not asking house. you for the combination. Sure. Shall we, uh, 
depart on our journey. I think that's a splendid idea. So, to be clear, we are going down to find this uh, noble. Do you have your own reasons for being down there? Well, I need to get the skull port for something that I need to finish off and right. kind of tidy up. Uh, beyond that, there's some things I need to investigate. But on the on the way, to on the way, port. like on the way, or as far down as we can get, I'd be quite. I'd quite like to see if we can be the ones to go the deepest. That would be, as a bard, you know, that's quite a, a story to sell. And obviously, I've, I won't I've mention heard you. What you bards are like. And uh, Kuro. There's a, a on the wall over there. There's like a finger. I want to find the rest of them. <laughs> Is that the wiggling finger? Yes. Oh, it says it tried to touch you if you poke it. It's very. I want to know if like the rest of them are also moving <gasps> for that one to move. What if they're all looking for each other? That I could re I could reunite them. They could all have their own little. Do you think they'd want their own little plaques, or all be together? What if we made them a plaque where they're all together, and we can just find lots of signet rings to put on them? That's a great idea. You do know that if you put parts of a troll together again, you just get a troll. I mean, that sounds cool too. I've never seen that happen before. Yeah, that that's amazing. But also, it's fine. Volo's here. He's a great adventurer. He can tackle a troll. Do you and we're only bringing back the fingers. How dangerous are a bunch of fingers? A bunch of troll fingers. Oh, uh, I can tell you some stories. You probably could, but they wouldn't be as good as mine. But think how good of a story it'll be when we find all these fingers and we bring them back. Imagine. Do they count as magic items? Can we sell them? Because there's, there's got to be some magic in those fingers if they're moving. What if we posted the them to someone we one. didn't like? We could post them piecemeal. Like, one finger, two oh. finger, a hand, an arm, and then when they'd get there... A horse head? Yeah, you'd end up with a horse-headed troll. That'd be so cool. That would be terrifying. I love the way we think. Lethargy, are we going to go down an adventure together? I think we should. Unfortunately, it seems like I have uh, no choice. choice but to accept <laughs> the hand that I have been dealt. <laughs> hand. Is it a troll hand? Fingers. <laughs> you know, if you put troll pieces together, you just get a troll. Did you know that? <laughs> like a puzzle. A troll puzzle. Vagi is going to stand up and walk home to the building portal. All right. He is done with your shit. <laughs> well, <I'm... laughs> while you're doing that, could I really quick get what everybody's passive perception and passive insight is? Passive I... perception for me is 16. Passive insight is also 16. Thank you. Uh, perception is 17. Insight is 20. Yeah, I gotcha. Perception is... 14, insight is 16. Amazing. That's Thank a you. point. While these two have been jabbering nonsense at me, mm -hmm. have I noticed any kind of deceit or anything? Uh, none that you've noticed outright. You do have a really high uh, insight. Nintaris, could you roll me a... Uh, it's not persuasion, it's the other one. Check. <laughs> Thank you. My brain just went, goodbye. <laughs> I'm leaving now. 23. So, uh, no, not as far as you've noticed. It seems like they're all pretty on the level, interested in money, maybe have something that they want to do down there, but who doesn't, apparently? Um, I, I have walked home to the portal. All right. As you head over that direction, Dernan looks out from across the bar and nods as he walks over that direction. Says, going down in the off-season, are we? We putting a bet down on ourselves? 
how do the bets work? Is it like that we come back or like a time, like closest without going over? Uh, we can do it a couple of different ways. We've got a few different people that have been deeper than somebody else, so a few that have been gone longer than somebody else, but we stopped doing that after the last guy hid in a closet for a month. Uh, also, you could do things like a most impressive magic item or monster part brought back up. Kind of just depends. Go and say it. You want to bring a, you want to bring a troll, troll bit back. You bring back nine troll bits. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a finger. Uh, welcome... Well, then, then I bring it back ten. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to make bets on you all surviving or not surviving or really whatever you want. Oh, bet on myself surviving. I think that's a good. How much would you like to put down? Do I? Would I know if there's any reason to have money down there? Uh, there are few and far between some reasons to have money. I'll put 25 gold on myself to come back. Alright. Can I put gold on Nentaris not coming back? Sure. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not really. <laughs> that Vagi is not putting a bed down. Well, then... Okay. Well, unless you have any other gold to place, that'll be three gold for the ride down. Each or total? Oh, one gold each, three total. Gotcha. I will I will just walk over and take three gold out and put it down. He moves over to this hand crank situation and moves the bucket over towards the side. It is an <laughs> oversized wash basin that has been kind of tied in here to this crane system. But uh, it looks well used, stable. The portal. Can I swing it? Yes, uh, as you're in it, you can swing it. You will start to bounce against the walls. The portal itself oh. does look like a uh, like a large well, but looking down as you near the bucket, it's just completely pitch black down there. You can maybe, if you stare at it for a long time, just make out maybe a sandy floor below you. Ready. Um... Ready. Have Ready. Torches. I don't know. Do you have torches? Pick. I just raise their species that doesn't oh. have dark vision again. I've got. Uh, I've got lanterns and lots of oil. That's there you go. Cool. Okay, good. I will take out a lantern and make sure it's filled with oil. Okay. And I'm then going to light it and hand it to Nintaris. Why are you giving me the lantern? Oh, I'll hold it. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> so, as we load up in the bucket, uh, Dernan gives you all a nod and says, good luck, and just starts moving this winch, and as he does so, the bucket jolts just a little bit, and then starts slowly kind of swinging its way down. With the lantern on, you see briefly little bits of the stone wall as you go down. It takes a full minute to descend as it gets darker and darker, but the lantern shines on the spots on the wall, and you start to see deep gouges into the wall, bits of blood splatter, just a little bit of older chaos that has occurred somewhere in this tube at some point before you be embarrassing to die on the way down before you find yourselves in a small square room with a single hallway extending out from one direction it appears to be largely empty except for 60 shields hanging on the wall surrounding you as you set down in the bucket I'll get out of the bucket with the lantern. Why are there shields? Can I take them? Can we take them? Are they for us? Uh, I assume if they were just free game, people would have taken them, right? Are there any gaps in the wall of shields? Uh, not currently. 
not they kind of appear to be a little randomly placed are they the same or uh they look to be a few different varieties from a few different periods in history all the way up to modern there's a few fairly nice looking ones up there i assume they are symbolic or maybe if people are running to exit they are used to fend off whatever is chasing them like a take a shield leave a shield system I... you need it I do not know. But I I have no use for a ship. By all means, Me take what you want. Otherwise, we should uh, start our quest as it was. Sure. I will lead the way, since it is my entourage. Okay. So you're heading out of the shield room. As you're doing that, uh, Mr. 17 percep Passive Perception, you hear the sound of running feet coming from north of you, not from south where the tunnel is. Sounds like somebody's running away from you. From right up here. Hold, hold, hold on. Did you hear? Did you hear that? Did I hear that? Uh, with your passive perception, maybe. You can also listen real hard, perhaps. Let's see here. And I will walk over to the corner. Uh, after he points it out, you can just catch it, Kuro. Uh, where he's pointing out in the corner, you just hear the last bit of footsteps echoing away. There was someone or something running. Well, but we know there are other people down here. Sounds like it was going away. I wonder if there is a... Uh, and I will look for signs of a hidden something in this corner. Sure thing. Uh, do you want to make an investigation check? Yes. No. That is a seven. Uh, you're having trouble determining it. The wall itself seems off to you, but you're not sure if it's because there's shields in the way or it just it just looks like a wall. But you know this is where you heard something behind, so you know common sense says to you there's got to be something there. But I I cannot see any kind of mechanism, but I would assume there is something. I'll point the lantern at it. Okay. Uh, with the lantern, In case it helps. With the lantern pointed out, it, it's a little more apparent that there is a uh, a hole in the wall there, about this big, about at eye level. Well, did you look some, in there? Something knows we are down the down here, and if you wish to put your eye to an unknown hole with an unknown thing behind it, be my guess. I can't just say stuff like that. It's now I want to do it. I will take a step back and not look like... I won't, because it'd be embarrassing to die in the first room. All right. I really I'm want to. So... I'm... The, the Sparky. Could you step to one side? I'd like to have a look. That will do so. Thank you. When I get there, I want to put my ear against the wall, mm -hmm. and I want to knock against it to see if I can get an idea of how thick the wall is. Sure. Uh, if you want to make an investigation or a perception check, your choice on that one. to make it in. Mm, 19. Good. Uh, listening to it, it sounds like maybe the thickness of like a house wall. Uh, less than a foot thick. Well, it's not very thick. We could probably smash it through. 
I am, I am, I am loath to leave something that was spying on us to get to wherever it is going with that information. Also, it's been running for a hot second. It might be gone already. If this is the main entrance where everybody goes, and no one has found this bit yet, we'd be the first ones to find it, and that is the good. That's a good start of a story. What do we think? If what if this is nothing? What if everyone's already come and stuck their eye in there, and then they're like, "Oh, it's just a little, it's a little passageway, a little secret." When you loop around the dungeon, this is how you get back to the beginning. You know. Break down the wall if you want, I don't care. I suppose you've got to have horns for some reason. Me. I'm gonna look in the hole. Alright. <laughs> Go ahead and make me a perception check. Not a deck saving throw. Disappointing. <laughs> Eight. All right. Uh, it's mostly dark in the other room. You can see a hallway that extends and seems to take a turn and what appears to be a broken crate is scattered in it. There's a broken box in here. But there was allegedly footsteps. But not anymore. Do we want to investigate the weird and wonderful not going to kill you if you look through it, I hope. Maybe we should just keep going. Like, is this? But this, this is how adventures and stories are made. Are we gonna stop and look at every hole? And this, this place is huge. There's gotta be so many holes. We could get one platinum for any magic item we find. Now, for some of us, there's a broken you... box in there. It could have something in. Taurus, if you wish to go that way, it is you who is going to open it. Okay. Kuro, could you step to the side, please? Yeah. I'm gonna Eldritch Blast the, the wall. Alright. What... I? You don't need to roll to hit, just what kind of damage am I looking at? <laughs> it's a wall, if you can't hit it, we've got bigger problems. I think it's force, right? Mm -hmm. uh, five force damage. Okay, uh, you see... You kind of aim for that little hole uh, that's in the middle of the wall, and you watch as cracks <laughs> radiate out around it, but the wall is still standing. I should do it again. It's a, I know it's only because I know it's only about a foot thick. Yeah. It's got hit points. <laughs> <laughs> that's eleven force damage. All right. Uh, the first Eldritch Blast, a little bit ineffectual. Y'all watch it spider crack and move out, but the second one you hear this resounding sort of crunch, sort of almost cave-in sound for a second as the now apparently doorway in front of you is uh, demolished loudly. We, we never asked if there was like rules for down here. Like, are we not supposed to break anything? Are we going to get like charged when we go back up for any damages? It's fine. Lefoggy can pay the bill. He said he's got lots of money. You're right. You're so right. Sighs and <laughs> looks through the doorway. Who who okay. wants to go first? Not me. <laughs> All right. Okay. I already looked down there. <laughs> As you all head down that section of passageway, uh, you can see that it appears to be a branching set of hallways. You can see a little bit of what appears to be definitely some recent type activity. A lot of footprints in the dust, a little bit of scattering maybe scraps of food down through here. Looks like somebody was maybe on watch and eating right behind this door. A lot of crumbs. Is there any indication of which way they went at this junction? Uh, you can make a survival or a perception check 
to try to see if you can spot which set of footprints in the dust is newer, if you want. Well, because apparently I can't roll dice anymore. It's just gone. Why do we bring this guy? It is... This is loaded. <laughs> It is hard to tell uh, from which direction that person went. You don't see them. You heard the footfalls. You know that they were light, probably humanoid, not heavy. And you can make that out. Uh, looking down through here, you don't see which direction they went. But you do hear a different, uh, a different sound coming from just around the corner of the uh, hallway up ahead of you. It sounds like something extremely heavy kind of walking and turning the corner you see this massive thing made of metal. It looks like maybe something like a shield guardian, these huge plates covering it up. Its eyes are this glowing arcane blue and it stops up there at the corner and it starts moving its hands. It looks a little like a, the Naruto moves in the anime <laughs> as it starts doing that and then it goes at you. Nothing happens. Just does that a few times. And then it kind of goes back to making the hand motions. You're not quite sure what it's doing. It hasn't moved towards you. It's just... That's okay, buddy. There. We all have spells that just don't go off sometimes. I'm at the age where my brain goes, Hey, a dookin! When anyone does that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Do we want to get out of here before he figures out how to do a spell? As you're saying that, it tries it one last time, and you're not sure that it has the capability to cast spells in the first place, but when you all don't seem impressed by its movements, you see it turn and begin walking back down the hallway quietly, shoulders slumping slightly. Aww. Well, he didn't seem violent. Why don't we go and have a chat with it? Be my guest. Antares, we are heading into the Mad Mage's dungeon, having conversations with everything that we meet down here will lead to you being dead. You know what? I thought we were going to Icewind Dale. Are we really going to the Mad Mage? I had no idea. That's where we are. Oddly enough, Unlike you, I want to have an adventure, and an adventure involves talking to people. A skill you don't seem to have. Lead on. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, as you head down that direction, you do spot uh, on the back of the shield guardian, on the back of its head, there's this flickering magical rune. Do I recognize the rune? Can I, or can I make it out from where we are? You can make an arcana check if you want. Yeah. Nine. Uh, well, base knowledge, you know that uh, things like shield guardians or constructs and similar can sometimes be controlled by something that shares a similar rune to them. It doesn't look like the rune means anything in particular. It's a made one for this creation, so... Likely whatever is powering or controlling it has a matching one. Uh, you've never seen one act like it was trying to cast spells. That did seem unusual. And you've never seen the flickering of the rune. It's always just hmm. been a steady glow. That is curious. <laughs> so as we ponder on flickering runes and uh, giant metal men, it's probably a good place to stop for tonight. <laughs> Yeah. As it is 518, so it's only 10 minutes off. Not too bad. It only yeah. took us how long to finally get into the portal? <laughs> <laughs> Almost two hours. <laughs> I think that's not bad. Speed run. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. I was ready for you all to run around Waterdeep if you wanted to. <laughs> These pie dynamics are going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Can we make a rule that if Rob's character dies, he has to make one that's not an asshole. I'm not an asshole. I'm just very direct. Okay. <laughs> well, it's a very thin line. Well, 
Oh my gosh. Well, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you have a free minute, feel free to go and check out the Kickstarter that Rob mentioned at the start of this. Uh, we should be live again here next week. We'll determine the time to make sure, but anybody else? Anything? Am I forgetting I mean, anything massively important? No, I, uh, that was that was a lot of fun. Uh, I, uh, I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. It's going to be good to see how we all get on or don't. <laughs> we'll all be the best of friends. We'll, we'll kill each other before anything can kill us. <laughs> <laughs>